ladies and gentlemen, this is the Envoy of Kairos, back for another speed paint, and oh boy, did I have fun with this one. So, my buddy Gast hit me up again, and he wanted another one of his D&D characters covered. Now, I'm definitely eager to work on that more, especially since it gives me experience with a slightly wider range of body types, heights, etc., and I need a lot more work on humanoid faces. I've never been the best at that, but as you'll see from the end results of this piece, I'm definitely improving at a pretty quick pace here. So, how did this turn out? And what's this character's deal? Well, this is Richter Stevenson. And he is a stout halfling and a uh, cleric of Ilmater. Now, Ilmater is definitely one of the better gods among the D&D pantheons. I mean, let's be honest, Ilmater is basically the D&D equivalent of Jesus Christ, just lacking the issue of having the most toxic, hateful, misappropriating fandom of all time. So, you know, all positives there, not to mention being the self-appointed uh, god of slaves, you know absorbing their pain and suffering and assisting in their freedom. Overall, I'd say that makes him one of the purest gods among the D&D pantheons. So, always glad to see more clerics of him. As for it being a stout halfling, that's an interesting choice considering halflings are usually a very free people that don't have too much to worry about. And the, the stout variant isn't too heavily used from my experience. I've never worked with any before, so it's interesting to see. Honestly, when I was first shown the character, I'd confused him for a dwarf. Honestly, when it came down to the proportions and general build of the character, it was very similar to a dwarf, all things considered. As for his overall design... Well, I was actually given two separate images to use as a base for his design, uh, both one of his early campaign designs and one closer to his current, and I wanted to go for something of a combination. The first design was the leather armor. The leather armor I honestly quite liked the aesthetics of, but it did feel a little underpowered and a little incomplete. Then there was the chain mail, which was frankly too plain of a design, and chainmail is a total pain in the ass to light, shade, draw, etc. So, I was a little hesitant to use that much of it. There was also a third design he gave me that he only wanted one component for it used, which was a uh, masquerade mission, in which he used essentially a costume dedicated to a practically opposite god just to trick his opponents appropriately. Very necrotic, very neon green. But he apparently did keep the cape from it, which I felt like was a pretty good addition. In the end, I ended up combining aspects of all three of them with only keeping the cape from the masquerade. The leather armor over top of the chainmail looks pretty good if you ask me. Uh, the shield design was a little customized. He had two very similar but separate ones in the two designs I was given, but I wasn't able to see the face of either of them. So I ended up sort of making my own thing and going for something a little more detailed, but generally the same type of round shield. As for the weapon, that's an interesting piece about this. So, it was a custom mace, directly blessed by Ilmater. This little beastie basically has Ilmater's red ropes, spiked as usual, wrapped around the handle and all the way up into the headpiece, lining the edges of essentially a D10-shaped headpiece. That was the only description I was given, and I decided to run with a few other things. If Ilmater's ropes were going to be a part of it, I figured the hands that are the part of his holy symbol should be as well. 
so I had the hands coming out of the handle and wrapping around the base of the headpiece, still tied in the ropes, and overall I feel like that turned out pretty well. And then of course, uh, I did take some liberties with the pommel and such, and the coarse wood grain, but I know he's very satisfied with it, actually very excited about the results. So I definitely handled that well. You're welcome, Gast. Hope your DM likes it too. That's about it for the design work. Uh, the armor and the chainmail and all were relatively self-explanatory. The only thing I really customized much was how the armor was combined and, of course, the mace. Actually getting the textures for it all down took a bit, as you'll see in the actual uh, process of this video. Which, if I'm timing this right, is probably happening in the background as I'm speaking this, or we're a bit past it. But, uh, after managing all the texturing and repositioning and warping the textures, the lighting and shading didn't take too much effort, as I've gotten quite a bit of experience with that at this point. And then there was a secondary layer of lighting and shading afterwards once I had the background figured out. But overall, this was a nice piece to experiment with and work on a few of my weaknesses. Faces have definitely been a problem for me, and I definitely improved on that. Dynamic poses are something I need to do more often, and this one turned out pretty well. It's not the most dynamic, but it's a step in the right direction. And at the same time, it looks sufficiently defensive, which is fitting for a cleric, especially for a stout halfling. So, in the end, the most difficult parts of this for me were probably, well, appropriately texturing, lighting, and shading the hair. Hair is always just a little bit annoying to work with, but I eventually managed it. And then, uh, I feel like I could have done with the background, but I was approaching the limit of his uh, budget for this piece. So I couldn't do too much yet without going over. I, if I had taken the time to and he had the budget for it, I would have. I really need more experience with backgrounds, so, you know, if there's anybody looking to commission me for a piece that's more complex in that area than the foreground, I'd be more than willing. It'd take me a long time to do right, and it would be a bit expensive, but I need to practice. I'll probably work on a few personal pieces in between commissions to expand on that as well, of course. Now, as for the chainmail, for that, I did something very new. I learned how to make Photoshop brushes myself. And I actually created the chainmail brush from scratch and set it to automatically realign itself based on the direction of my brush stroke. So it links itself together naturally at the perfect distance no matter what scale I rescale the brush for made it quite the versatile brush that I think I'll be using a lot moving forwards. It even already has some opacity adjustments in the brush itself, allowing for it to be used as an overlay on top of the base color of the chainmail, and then essentially resulting in lighting and shading it in the process of creating the chainmail texture itself. It's actually pretty brilliant how I managed to pull that together, and I love the results. I'm eager to find more excuses to use it. But, overall, I think that's everything I have to say about this piece. This is Richter Stevenson, Stout Halfling Cleric of Ilmater. And more proof that Gas definitely has a general taste in characters that could be equated to the fun-sized mages guild. Hope you love it, Gas, and hope your party finds it interesting, too. So, this is the Envoy of Kairos signing out, and I'll see you all again another two weeks for another speed paint. I know this one was a bit late, I've been busy with a few things, but I have three weeks to get ahead, so... That should have me far enough ahead to cover all of next month and a bit into November.
Wait, no. A bit into December. What the hell am I saying? Well, that's all for now. Later, guys.